Hello and welcome to yet another video. This is the second episode of the story, in which Naruto, born into the Uchiha clan, rises to become the strongest Uchiha and shinobi ever, alongside his sister, the Nine Tails Jinchuriki. Please like and subscribe to show your support. Let's get the show started. After training all night, Naruto and Natsumi arrived at training ground 7 ready for their test. Natsumi showed Naruto her secret technique and he was a bit worried, but she showed him that she could handle it with no problem. They arrived at 7.30 since Naruto explained to her that he found out Kakashi was always three hours late like him, so they agreed to show up at 7.30 after eating breakfast. Sakura tried yelling at them, but they both ignored her and sat down. Sasuke glared at Naruto, but he wasn't even paying attention to Sasuke since he was reading the sealing book left by his father. Thirty minutes later, Kakashi finally arrived. Morning, everyone. Ready for your first day? Kakashi asked, you're late. Sakura yelled, well, a black cat crossed my path, so I had to take the long way. Kakashi said, does this cat have a scar over its left eye and two different colored eyes? Naruto asked, in fact it does. Kakashi said and Natsumi just looked at him, see? I was telling the truth. That's the cat the Inazuka dogs keep trying to kill. Naruto said and put his book away, I've heard about you. Nice mask. Kakashi said, thanks. Naruto said, what the hell is going on? Natsumi asked, never mind that. Let's get started. Kakashi said and set a clock on a stump, what's the clock for? Sakura asked, it's set for noon. Your assignment is very simple. You just have to take these bells from me. That's all there is to it. If you can't get them by noon, you go without lunch. You'll be tied to those posts and you'll watch while I eat my lunch in front of you. Kakashi said, so that's why. Sasuke thought, he told us not to eat breakfast to make it harder on us. Sakura thought and then realized something, wait a minute. There's four of us and only three bells. How come you have an odd number of bells? Sakura asked, well, that way, at least one of you will end up tied to a post and ultimately disqualified for failing to complete the mission. That one will go back to the academy. Then again, all four of you could flunk out as well. You can use any weapon, including shuriken. If you're not prepared to kill me, you won't be able to take the bells. Kakashi said, those weapons are too dangerous, sensei. Sakura said, yeah. You couldn't even dodge that eraser. Natsumi said and laughed at him, the loudest ones are usually the weakest of the bunch. Kakashi said, well it's a good thing Sakura is the loudest person in the village. Natsumi said, sheesh. She looks like her mother and acts just like her. However, Natsumi is a bit more brash than Lady Kushina. Kakashi thought, when I say start, you can begin. Kakashi said and Natsumi was about to charge at him with a kunai, but she was stopped as Kakashi twisted her arm and had her holding her own kunai at her neck, he's so fast. I didn't even see it. Sakura thought, so this is a jonin. Sasuke thought, he was holding back. Naruto thought, don't be in such a hurry. I didn't say start yet, but. It's good that you came at me with the full intention of destroying me, so how can I say this? I'm actually starting to like you guys. Get ready, start. Kakashi said and they jumped into the forest except for Naruto who used a shunshin, ninjas must know how to conceal their movements and hide effectively. Kakashi said and then turned around to see Natsumi, you and me. Right now. Fair and square, Cyclops. Natsumi said, you know, compared to the others, you're a little bit weird. Kakashi said, that just means I stand out more. Being weird is a compliment. Natsumi said and Kakashi pulled out a book, Shinobi Battle Techniques, Lesson 1. Taijutsu. Kakashi said Natsumi ran at Kakashi and threw a wild punch, but Kakashi easily caught it. 
She sent a kick to his head, but he just squatted down and she missed. She went for a punch to his face, but he just disappeared. Don't let your enemy get behind you all the time. Kakashi said and tried the Hidden Leaf Village secret jutsu, thousand years of death, but his hands went straight through Natsumi, a clone. Sakura thought all of a sudden, multiple Natsumi shadow clones came out of the river and ran at Kakashi. Then Kakashi was grabbed from behind by Natsumi and all of them jumped at Kakashi holding him down while one of them went for a knockout punch, but Kakashi substituted with a log and escaped. A good tactic, but you're going to have to try harder if you want these bells. Kakashi said and then he was struck with some shuriken, but turned into a log, he's gone again. Probably fighting Sasuke. Natsumi said and then they heard Sakura scream, looks like that's one down. Naruto said, are you sure this will work? Natsumi asked, of course. I did some digging around last night and he's the last remaining student from our dad's genin team. It's not a coincidence that the two of us were put on the same team with him as our squad leader. That doesn't mean he'll go easy on us though. We still need to get the bells. Naruto said, how? He's too strong for us to take him on single-handedly. Natsumi said, that's why we're going to take him on together. Me and you by ourselves should be enough to get the bells from him. The answer to this test is teamwork. He's trying to put us against each other to get a bell, but the true purpose is to work together. Naruto said, wow. That son of a bitch was tricking us. Natsumi said, I should really talk to the people in your building about how they talk around you. Naruto said, what? I didn't do anything wrong. They've expanded my vocabulary. Natsumi said, right. That's what you call it. Anyway, are you ready? He's on his way back and I can tell the other two are knocked out. Naruto said, yeah, I'm ready. Natsumi said as Kakashi came back with Sakura and Sasuke unconscious under his arms, so, are the two of you going to even try? Kakashi asked, sure. It's not like you weren't expecting this. You know exactly who we are. Naruto said, I. Hope you're ready, Cyclops. Natsumi said, all right. I'll entertain the two of you for now. Kakashi said as he tied Sasuke and Sakura to a post, I see you're taking us seriously. Natsumi said as she cracked her knuckles, not in the slightest. Kakashi said, your funeral. Natsumi said, don't worry, Kakashi. I'm sure you'll put that book up quicker than you think. Naruto said and unknown to them except Naruto, the other Jonin sensei plus Hiruzen came to see this test, he doesn't seem so tough. Looks like a lonely old pervert if you ask me. Natsumi said, he's just an obstacle in our way. Nothing more. Nothing less. Naruto said, well, those were a bit of hurtful words. Kakashi said and then blocked a punch from both of them, they're fast. However, Naruto seems to have something holding back his true speed. Kakashi thought, let's teach him a lesson, Naruto. Natsumi said and her eyes turned red as she drew out some of the Nine Tails chakra, yeah. Naruto said as he activated his Sharingan and deactivated his resistance seals, oh shit. Kakashi thought before Kakashi could make a move, Naruto and Natsumi threw a few punches at him, but he was able to block some of them until he was overwhelmed and kicked away by Naruto. He put his book away and lifted his headband revealing a Sharingan. He was a bit embarrassed having to use it, but he was going up against Natsumi who was using the Nine Tails Chakra a bit and Naruto who had a fully matured Sharingan, so he didn't want to take any chances. Kakashi looked up and saw them coming towards him with a flying kick, but knocked both of them away. Naruto pulled out a kunai and challenged Kakashi himself for a bit as Natsumi was kicked away. Kakashi and Naruto traded a few punches to the shock of all the spectators except for Hiruzen who knew Naruto had experience from fighting off Danzo's root umbu for the past six years. Naruto managed to get a few good hits on Kakashi before he was kicked away. Natsumi came in and started using her fighting style which was a mixture between brawling and Wing Chun. As they were fighting, 
Naruto was waiting for the right moment to help Natsumi out and it came so he threw a kunai at Kakashi who knocked it away, but gave Natsumi just enough of an opening to attack. He faked a right hook that Kakashi's Sharingan followed and then hit him with an open left hand strike to the face. Kakashi jumped back as Naruto appeared a few feet behind her and looked at them. These two have tremendous teamwork and they're not even communicating. Kakashi thought, here we go, Natsumi. Naruto said as he unsealed a Fuma Shuriken, let's go. Natsumi said Naruto threw the Fuma Shuriken that he secretly attached ninja wire to and then it turned into two of them, but they went right past Kakashi. Naruto pulled in the ninja wire and then Kakashi was in the middle of a storm of Fuma Shuriken. While Kakashi was trying to find a way to escape, Naruto channeled lightning chakra. Threw the chakra strings and basically trapped Kakashi inside of the storm of Fuma Shuriken. That's a good combination, Naruto. The two of you have good teamwork. Natsumi, I hope you know what you're doing with that chakra. Kakashi said, as he appeared from underneath the ground behind them, if I didn't know what I was doing I wouldn't be using it. Natsumi said and smirked Kakashi heard a crack, then looked at the ground and barely managed to jump out of the way from a Fuma shuriken that went up into the air. The shuriken turned into Natsumi who threw another shuriken at Kakashi, but that shuriken turned into Naruto. Kakashi quickly wrapped Naruto in some ninja wire, but to his and everyone else's shock, Naruto switched places with him. Nobody noticed Naruto activating his Manjikyu Sharingan and without the use of his chakra, Kakashi had no choice but to take on the full force of Natsumi's punch that sent him crashing into a tree. What was that? Natsumi asked as she released the Nine Tails Chakra, a secret technique. Naruto said and deactivated his Sharingan, but then the timer went off, damn it. We didn't get the bells. Natsumi said, yes we did. Naruto said, as he held up the three bells and gave one to Natsumi, how did you get them? Natsumi asked, when I switched places with him. Naruto said, very good you too. You are the first team to get the bells. Now, since there are only three bells, who gets the last one? Kakashi asked and they threw the bells to their unconscious teammates, they can have them. Sakura would yell her heart out if she failed, which would cause the Inazuka dogs to lose their minds and Sasuke would bitch and complain to the council like he always does when something doesn't go his way. Naruto said, yeah. We know the old man doesn't want to deal with his bullshit. Natsumi said and Kakashi sweat dropped, who taught her to speak like that? Kakashi thought, well, Team 7 passes. I'll go and let the Hokage know that you passed. Kakashi said, he already knows. Naruto said and pointed to the onlookers, when did they get here? Natsumi asked, right before we started to fight. Naruto said, well, you two are certainly a good team. Hiruzen said, did you expect anything less? Natsumi asked, well, how did they do, Kakashi? Hiruzen asked, honestly, I don't see how Sakura passed, Sasuke is good for age, but relies too much on himself and I don't need to say anything about these two. Kakashi said, then it looks like team 7, 8 and 10 pass. Hiruzen said, what about the ones that failed? Natsumi asked, they're going into the reserves unless they no longer want to be a ninja. Hiruzen said, I did it. I'm a ninja. Natsumi said and started jumping around, however, I'd like to make a recommendation. Kakashi said, what would that be? Hiruzen asked, I'd like to recommend Naruto for a promotion to special genin. Kakashi said, what makes you say that? Asuma asked, yeah. It's been quite some time since we've had a special genin. Hiruzen said, what's a special genin? Natsumi asked, it's for a new genin that has the skills of a chunin, but needs the field experience to get promoted to chunin. Hiruzen said, does that mean I don't have to do those stupid D-rank missions? Naruto asked, yes. You'll mainly do C-rank and B-rank missions. Hiruzen said, I'll take it. Naruto said, wait. We were supposed to become chunin together. We can't do that if you get a head start. Natsumi said, don't worry. 
I won't take the promotion unless you're involved. Naruto said the only way for that to happen is if she takes the Chunin exams in six months. Hiruzen said then that's when I'm taking my promotion. Naruto said congratulations, Naruto. The only person to get promoted this fast was the fourth Hokage. Hiruzen said hey. Why am I tied to a post? Sakura asked you got your ass handed to you. Natsumi said shut up. Stupid tomato. Sakura yelled the fuck did you just call me? Natsumi yelled and her hair split into nine pieces as she walked toward Sakura, aren't you going to stop her? Karinai asked why me? Naruto asked because you're the only person in the village who can stop her. Karinai said that doesn't mean I have to do it all the time. Naruto said Naruto, I'd rather not have a dead genin in less than a week of having a team. Just calm her down. Kakashi said, fine. Natsumi, how about some celebratory ramen at Ikaraku's? Naruto asked, deal. Natsumi yelled and grabbed Naruto before running off leaving a cloud of dust, seriously? That's all it takes? Asuma asked, no. They have this little competition going on and I believe they're tied at 35 wins each. This is going to be another challenge of theirs. Kurinai said, my money is on Natsumi. She's the defending queen of gluttony. Asuma said, that's a thing? Kakashi asked, oh yes. Their competitions brings the Ikarakus a ton of money. Hiruzen said, how do you know about that? Asuma asked, I may or may not have placed a few bets there myself. Hiruzen said, shame on you, old man. Naruto said, what are you doing here? I thought you left. Kurinai said, I'm a shadow clone. The boss wants to know if he's still part of Team 7. Clone Naruto said, yes. He's still part of Team 7. Hiruzen said, thanks old man. The clone said went up in smoke, Kakashi, free your remaining students and then I'll see you all for your first missions. Hiruzen said and left with his umbu two months later Naruto was returning from another C-rank mission and it was the twelfth C-rank mission he's been on in the past two months. Bandit eliminations and escort missions were all he went on, but he was thankful he didn't have to do any D-rank missions. He was quickly becoming a favorite to have on missions since he knew to relax and not be so serious all the time which was good for his teammates. Given by the mask and the way he carried himself, a lot of people thought he was like Kakashi or arrogant like Sasuke, but he was different. Yo, Naruto. Do you mind giving the mission report? I need to get back to gate duty with Izumo. Kotetsu said, sure. I'll see you later. Naruto said and vanished mission office, yo. I'm back old man. Naruto said, as he entered the office, Naruto, don't you know how to knock? Karina asked, as she was in the room getting a mission for Team 8, only on you and Enko's door. Mission complete, old man. Naruto said, H hi, N Naruto. Hinata meekly said from behind Shino, HM? Oh hey, Shino. How'd you make your voice sound like that? Naruto asked and everyone sweat dropped, he can't be serious. Karina thought, hello, Naruto. However, that was not me. It was Hinata who said that. Shino said, who's Hinata? Naruto asked, she's in our class, idiot. Kiba said, I went to class ten times a month and sometimes I was asleep. If she didn't talk to me, then I would know her. Anyway, mission complete, old man. Naruto said, hey. Show some respect to the Hokage. Kiba said, shut up. Stupid mutt. Naruto said, Kurinai, you have your missions for the day. You're dismissed. Hiruzen said, thank you. Come on, team 8. After these two missions, we have training. Kurinai said and they left, how did the mission go, Naruto? Hiruzen asked, not bad. We cleared out the bandits with no problem. Kotetsu went back to his gate duty. Naruto said, I see. 
since it's still early, how would you like a B-rank delivery mission? Hiruzen asked, why is a delivery mission listed as a B-rank mission? Naruto asked, because this goes straight to the Kazakage. Typically I would send a two-man team of Chunin, but you're as strong as two Chunin combined from what I've heard from your missions and your test against Kakashi. Hiruzen said, I guess you're right. What's so important about this document? Naruto asked, it's an invitation for the Chunin exams that start in a few months. I've already sent letters to the other villages, but Suna. This shouldn't take you any longer than a week to accomplish. Hiruzen said, you got it. Naruto said and pulled out a book, a new book? Which one is it this time? Hiruzen asked, it's on how to create a jutsu. I want my own signature jutsu for myself. Naruto said, I see. I cannot wait to see what you come up with. Hiruzen said, I'll see you later. Remember, keep that seat warm for Natsumi. Naruto said and vanished, it's hard to forget. Hiruzen said, those two will be the future of the village and the leaders of the next generation to come. Hiruzen thought Naruto as Naruto was walking through the Kanoha forest on his way to Suna, he was reading his book intently and was already thinking of a jutsu to create for himself. He wanted it to be a fire-type jutsu, but he had to work on his fire manipulation first. He kept his sensory ability on high as he didn't want to get ambushed and then out of the corner of his eye, he saw a puff of smoke. Being curious. He took a detour to see what it was and was shocked to say the least. He was looking at what appeared to be a wounded dragon that came up to his waist. He used what medical knowledge he had and healed the dragon. There you go. Naruto said, thanks. Who are you? The bird asked, you're a summoning creature. Naruto said, exactly. The dragon said, well, the name is Naruto Uchiha. What happened to you? Naruto asked, nice to meet you, Naruto. I'm Comet. To answer your question, I was injured by a snake on my way to find a summoner for the dragon contract since our last summoner died a few years ago. Manda started a war many years ago with some of the summoning creatures. Comet said, who's Manda? Naruto asked, he's the boss summons of the snake clan. He started a war between the dragons, toads, snakes, slugs over twenty years ago. The toads, dragons and slugs are allied, but Manda ruined the reputation of the snake clan and is currently trying to get rid of us. We've lost some good dragons due to this war and we want to stop it. Comet said, the snakes sound like they are very powerful. Naruto said, they are, but their strength isn't what makes this difficult. A dragon and toad could easily defeat a snake, but they have the ability to sneak around undetected and that's how they've been killing us off. Comet said, I see. If you're in the middle of a war why come look for a summoner then? Naruto asked, Lady Catalina is the summoning boss for the dragons and he thought we'd be stronger if we had a summoner. Comet said, this Manda must be an idiot to start a war with three different summoning clans. Anyway, I'm kind of on a mission and need to get going. Naruto said, you're a ninja? The Comet asked, yeah. I'm from Kanoha. Naruto said and pointed at his headband, do you want to be the new dragon summoner? We could use a good ally like you. Comet said and then a puff of smoke went off revealing a dragon the size of the tree surrounding them, Comet, what are you doing? The dragon asked and it was a feminine voice, my apologies, Lady Catalina. I was doing my mission to locate our new summoner and then I was attacked by a snake. I was going to heal up and return, but this ninja healed me. Comet said, is this true, ninja? Catalina asked, yes. Naruto Uchiha pleasure to meet you. Naruto said and bowed, Naruto. Tell me, what is your mother's name? Catalina asked, Sayuri Uchiha. Why? Naruto asked, it is an honor to finally meet her hatchling. I am Catalina. I was your mother's personal summons and now I am the boss summons of the dragon clan. Had I known you were still alive, I would have come to you sooner. Catalina said, my mom never mentioned she had a summoning contract. 
Naruto said, I see, but it is true. She was the very first summoner of this specific contract. Harper said, can he be our summoner? Comet asked, I have no problems with that. Allying with Kanoha again will be good for us. Catalina said, and. Then a summoning scroll appeared at his feet, not to be rude, but I'm in the middle of a mission right now. What should I do? Naruto asked, prick your finger and sign them in blood. You'll need to make a handprint as well underneath your name. Comet will be your personal summons, but he's due to start training so he won't be available for some time. Catalina said, awesome. Comet said, there. Now what? Naruto asked, now, you can continue with your mission. If you are traveling a long distance, summon one of us. We have some dragons that are mainly transportation summoning creatures. Catalina said and went up in smoke with Comet, well, I guess I won't have to walk to Suna. Naruto said and went through hand signs summoning Jutsu, greetings, Naruto. I am Dash. How may I be of service? Dash asked he was a falcon the size of a house, can you take me to Suna? Naruto asked, of course. Just hold on. I am one of the fastest of the dragon clan. Dash said, as Naruto hoped on, all right. I'm ready. Naruto said and Dash flew off like he was shot out of a cannon Suna the gate guards at Suna were relaxing as the sun was shining right on top of them. They weren't expecting anybody today so imagine their surprise when a huge dust cloud was coming straight towards them. They went on guard and readied themselves for an attack. They were shocked to see a huge dragon stop and then a person jump off. Halt. State your name and business for visiting Suna. A guard said, oh right. I'm Naruto Uchiha and I'm here to deliver a message to the Kazakage directly from our Hokage. Naruto said, you're a bit early. We weren't expecting you for a few more days. The guard said, I caught a ride. Naruto said and pointed at Dash, I shall return to the summoning world, Naruto. Dash said and went up in smoke, very well. You may enter. The guard said, thanks. Naruto said and walked into the village, you saw the dragon, right? One of the guards asked, yeah. The other guard said as he was walking around, Naruto noticed people would stare at him and figured it was because he wasn't from around here. He was looking around and noticed a few shops that sold ninja gear and decided he'd look into them after he delivered his message to the Kazakage. As he was walking, he noticed somebody was following him, but he ignored it for now and decided to deal with it later. He reached the Kage Tower and went up to the secretary. Excuse me. Naruto said, yes. How may I help you? She asked, I'm here from Kanoha to deliver a message to the Kazakage. Naruto said, you're a few days early, but he's available. Right this way. The secretary said and led him to a door before knocking, enter. A male voice said, Lord Kazakage, the Kanoha messenger has arrived. She said, he's early. The Kazakage said, I had a ride. Naruto said, very well. What is it the Hokage has for me? The Kazakage asked, it's an invitation to the Chunin exams in a few months. Naruto said. And gave him the scroll, I see. Very well. You will see me there. Now, you should seek shelter as we are expecting a sandstorm soon. After that you must leave. The Kazakage said as he wrote a response and gave Naruto the scroll, sure. Naruto said and bowed before leaving Naruto, where should I go now? Naruto asked himself he was walking around the village and once again he was being followed. He was walking around not paying attention and knocked somebody to the ground. Hey! Watch where you're going. A girl said, sorry about that. Naruto said and helped her up, yeah you better be. The girl said, you don't have to be such a bitch about it. I apologized and helped you up. The least you could do is say thank you. Naruto said, excuse me. Do you know who I am? The girl asked, no and frankly I don't care. As far as I know, 
you're a spoiled girl with no manners. Naruto said, I am the daughter of the Kazakage. She said, so? Naruto asked, that's it? That's all you have to say? She asked bewildered, yeah. I mean I'm not even from here. Is everybody rude like you? Naruto asked, I'm not rude. I'm basically royalty and I've kinda grown accustomed to people treating me like that. My name is Tamari. Tamari said, Naruto Uchiha. Naruto said, what's a Kanoha Chunin doing here? Tamari asked, I'm not a Chunin. I'm an elite genin and I had to give your father a letter for the Chunin exams in a few months. Naruto said, an elite genin? What's that? Tamari asked, it's a new genin that has the skills of a Chunin, but needs the field experience to get promoted to Chunin. Naruto said, wow. So, will you be taking the Chunin exams? Tamari asked, yeah I'm still taking them. Naruto said, isn't that cheating? Tamari asked, not really. I'm not a Chunin, I just have the strength to fight a Chunin. Naruto said, how old are you anyway? Tamari asked, 13. You? Naruto asked, 14. Tamari said, are you a Chunin? Naruto asked, no. I wanted to be on a team with my brothers so I waited two years before I entered the academy. I'm the oldest. My brother Kenkuro is your age and my brother Gara is twelve. Tamari said, cool. So, do you know where a hotel is? I need to find somewhere to stay for a couple days. Naruto said, you can stay at my place with me and my brothers. Tamari said, we just met and you're already taking me home? Wow, this is so unexpected. You never even took me to dinner. Naruto said and Tamari blushed, w what? I it's not like that. Tamari said, I know. I'm just messing with you. Naruto said, "M, maybe I can show you around. Tamari said, get a hold of yourself, Tamari. Tamari thought, like a date? Naruto asked, no. I mean yes. I mean no. Tamari said, how about we agree that it's a date and in return, I'll take you out on a date if you're at the Chunin exams. Sounds fair? Naruto asked, sure. Now, come on. Tamari said and grabbed his hand, wow. Holding my hand already. You move fast. Naruto said. Shut up. Tamari said and blushed again as they were walking through the village, everyone was staring at Tamari because she was holding hands with a boy and she's never done that before. While Naruto was getting glared at by the boys, Tamari was receiving some glares of her own from the girls who were watching Naruto once he stepped foot in the village. Tamari stayed silent while Naruto was just looking around at everything until they came to a stop. Where are we? Naruto asked, it's a restaurant. They sell my favorite foods here. Tamari said, as they walked in, Lady Tamari, welcome. Oh? Who is this? A boyfriend? The waitress teased and Tamari blushed, no. He's a genin from Kanoha. He was on a mission and we bumped into each other. I decided to show him around. Tamari said, then why are you still holding his hand? She asked, because they're smooth as a baby's bottom. Naruto said, charming. I'm Mei. Nice to meet you. Mei said, Naruto. Naruto said, so, would you like a private booth or something out in the open? Mei asked, something out in the open. Tamari said, sorry, but we're filled up. Our open tables are reserved. What a shame. Looks like you'll have to eat in a private booth. May said and grinned at Tamari who was glaring at her, that's fine with me. What's wrong with a private booth? Naruto asked, follow me. May said and they followed her to the booth, oh. Now I see why. Naruto said the booth was a small table between a couch that was surrounded by a black curtain with candles on the table and a very expensive chandelier hanging over the table. The booth was in a separate room and you could see the sunset from the window. 
Now, what can I start you two off with to drink? May asked, I'll have some herbal tea. Tamari said, same. Naruto said, sure thing. I'll be right back. Enjoy your date. May said and walked away, how are you going to eat with a mask on? Tamari asked, you'd be amazed, but I'll take it off. It would be rude if I were to eat with it on during our date. Naruto said, why do you wear it anyway? Tamari asked, well, my mom made me wear them when I was younger because of who my dad was and my father was supposed to be kept a secret until I was strong enough to defend myself. Also, I just got used to it, but I'll stop wearing it eventually. I also joke around with it. Naruto said, how? Tamari asked, take my sister Anko for instance. She asked me if I could show her what's under the mask and when I pulled the mask down, showed her another mask. Naruto said and Tamari laughed, you won't do that to me, would you? Tamari asked, no. It would be rude to eat with this on while I'm on a date. Naruto said, does anybody know what you look like under the mask? Tamari asked, my mom, my sister Kurinai, Natsumi, Anko, and the Hokage. You'll be the fifth person to see me without a mask. Naruto said, no way. You're not ugly are you? Tamari asked, I'll be the most sought after person in the village when I remove my mask. Naruto said, well, then you better not disappoint me or you won't get that second date. Tamari said, well, prepare to be disappointed. I have buck teeth and humongous lips underneath this mask. Naruto said and they laughed, seems like your date is going well. What can I get for you two to eat? May asked as she placed their drinks on the table, I'll have my usual. Tamari said, I'll take some barbecue camel. Naruto said and they looked at him, are you sure? Tamari asked, yeah. Why? Naruto asked, that dish is enough to feed four people. May said, I don't see the problem. Naruto said, all right. One order of roasted chestnuts and vegetable soup for Tamari and an order of barbecue camel for Naruto. Now, are you going to be rude and eat with your mask on? May asked, no. I'm going to take it off. Naruto said, show me what's underneath the mask. May said, okay. Underneath this mask, is another mask. Pretty cool, right? Naruto asked, as he showed Mei another mask and her eye twitched, what's under that mask? Mei asked, another mask. Naruto said and Mei stormed away from them making Tamari laugh, okay. That's hilarious. Tamari said, thank you. I'm sure you see why I do it. Naruto said, I do. Tamari said and drank some of her tea, so, tell me about yourself. Naruto said, well, Growing up as the daughter of the fourth Kazakage and the sister of Gara, I had a hard time making friends as everyone was always intimidated by my family. I'm usually stoic, but you're making me be more outgoing I guess. I'm very blunt and I don't mind speaking my mind. I may be cruel, but I do value peace. Tamari said, what about your mom? Naruto asked and Tamari gained a sad look in her eyes, she died the day Gara was born. They turned him into a monster while she was still pregnant with him. Tamari said, they sealed the one-tailed beast inside of him before he was born. Naruto said, yeah. How'd you know? Tamari asked, he's been following me around the village since I got here. Naruto said, stay away from him. He'll kill you. Tamari said, don't worry. I can handle the one-tailed beast. Anyway. Whose idea was it to do that? If you want to seal a tailed beast inside of a baby, the best time to do it is right after it's born. Naruto said, well, that's not what they did. He's become a terror thanks to the harsh treatment and a cold-blooded killer. He can't even sleep or else Shikaku will instantly take over. Tamari said, sounds like a faulty seal. Naruto said, our best seal masters place the seal on him. Tamari said, can you show me the seal? Naruto asked and Tamari pulled out book then showed him the seal, this barely passes as a storage seal. Naruto said, how can you tell? 
Tamari asked, I'm a level 5 seal master and I make my own storage seals. This thing sucks. Naruto said, let's talk about something else. What do you do for fun in Konoha? Tamari asked, I mainly train. If. Not then I'll sit up on the Hokage Monument to relax and watch the sunset. I only hang out with my Natsumi and Ino, but they do girly things like shopping, so those are the only two things I really do. Naruto said, maybe if you remember the second date I'll join you on one of your activities. Tamari said and then May came back, hello, lovebirds. Here's your food, Tamari and here's your food, Naruto. Enjoy. May said and left, this looks so good. Naruto said, alright. Stop drooling or you'll ruin the mask. Tamari said, I'm wearing two of them. Naruto said, whatever. Take them off like you promised. Tamari said, oh yeah. I forgot. Naruto said and took off his masks making Tamari turn bright red, h he's hot. He's easily the best looking boy I've seen. No wonder he keeps the mask on. Sorry ladies, but he's mine. Tamari thought and never noticed she was drooling, here. Let me help you with that. Naruto said and wiped her mouth for her, huh? Tamari asked, you were drooling. Naruto said and Tamari came to reality, sorry, but it's not my fault. You're freaking hot. Tamari said, thanks for the compliment. You're not too bad on the eyes yourself. Naruto said and she blushed, thank you. Tamari said and then a monkey appeared, what does the old man want now? Naruto asked, he needs you to head over to Wave. Team 7 ran into some trouble and their C-rank mission was boosted to an A-rank mission. The monkey said and gave him a scroll, fine. It'll have to be in a few days. Suna is expecting a sandstorm in a few hours. The Kazakage gave me his reply. Take it back to him. Naruto said and gave the monkey a scroll, sure thing. The monkey said and went up in smoke, the monkey? Tamari asked, it's the Hokage summons. Naruto said, you call the Hokage old man? Tamari asked, yup. I've always called him that. Naruto said, so, an A-rank mission, huh? Tamari asked, yeah. I guess I have to go and save their asses. Naruto said, you said you're an Uchiha, so do you have the Sharingan? Tamari asked, I don't know. You'll have to wait until the Chunin exams if you compete. Naruto said, I guess that's fair. How's your food? Tamari asked as she took a bite of hers, it was good. Naruto said, what do you mean by was? Tamari asked and then looked at his empty plate, I mean I ate it all. It was really good. Naruto said, how did you finish so quickly? Tamari asked, I'm used to eating a lot. I have a big appetite. Naruto said, I can tell. So, any specific place you want to visit? Tamari asked as she finished eating, that ninja store caught my attention. Maybe I can get some new jutsus while I'm there. Naruto said, as he paid for the food and put his mask back on, sure. I need to pick up my fan anyway. Tamari said, so you're a wind-type user. Naruto said, yeah. Are you a wind user? Tamari asked, nope. Naruto said, well, what kind do you use? Tamari asked, can't tell you. If we fight during the Chunin exams, I don't want to give you any type of advantage. Naruto said, as they left the restaurant, I hope you're not expecting much at this store. Everyone here is mainly a wind or earth type user. Unless you have an earth chakra nature, you won't find much here. Tamari said, I just want to look inside. I never said I was going to buy something. I said maybe I can get something. Naruto said, so, what was your father like? Tamari asked, I don't know. I've never met him. Naruto said, how come? Tamari asked, he died the night of the Nine Tails attack. I was only two months old when he died. Naruto said, sorry. I'm sure that was a tough night for everyone. 
Tamari said, it was. People still aren't over it. Naruto said, I would imagine so. I mean, people here mainly attacked Gara at first because of Shikaku's actions before Gara even became a Jinchuriki. Tamari said, people fear what they do not understand. However, I'd like to talk to a tailed beast. Naruto said and Tamari stopped, why the hell would you want to do that? They're monsters. Tamari said, I don't think so. It's like I said. People fear what they don't understand. Naruto said, well, good luck doing that. Tamari said, I know. It's easier said than done. Naruto thought, thanks. Naruto said, what about your mother? Is she still around? Tamari asked, no. She died when I was seven years old from a disease that our doctors couldn't figure out. She took her last breath in my arms. Naruto said, sorry for asking. I guess that's something we have in common. Well, not the dying in your arms part, but losing a mother at a young age. Tamari said, yeah. I'm guessing it wasn't your father who raised you. Naruto said, what makes you say that? Tamari asked, whenever you mentioned him, I could tell your demeanor changed a bit. Naruto said, you're right. He's the one who gave the order to turn Gara into a Jinchuriki. After a while when Gara was deemed unstable, he sent assassins after Gara and all of them were killed. Gara was still sane after all of that, but he completely changed after our father hired our uncle to physically and mentally hurt Gara to test his control over Shikaku. People believe that Gara killed him, but I don't believe that. Our uncle was the other person outside of me and Kenkuro who Gara loved. After that night, Gara only started to care about only himself. Tamari said, Sounds like your father is a dickhead. No offense. Naruto said, None taken. As for your statement that our father didn't raise us, it's true. We were left in the hands of caretakers after our mother died. He's always in the office or out doing something. We have a huge house for just the three of us. Our caretakers left when Gara became even more unstable. Tamari said, that sucks. I mean basically raising yourself and your brothers doesn't sound easy. Naruto said, it's not. I mean before you bumped into me, I never really talked to anybody except my brothers and the council members. Tamari said, well, you can talk to me. Naruto said, you're only in the village for a few day until you have to leave. I guess I'll make it last. Tamari said, don't worry. You'll hear from me again. Naruto said and they entered the shop, I'm gonna go get my fan. You can look around to see if you find anything you want. Tamari said when Tamari walked away, Naruto looked around for anything he liked and noticed his options were extremely limited. He found a few lightning and fire jutsus, but that was it. After he paid for his stuff, Naruto went and stood outside to wait for Tamari, but then he came face to face with a red-haired boy who people were telling him to run away from. So, my stalker finally decided to show up. I'm guessing that you're Gara. Naruto said, I am. Gara said, so, what do you want? Naruto asked, mother wants your blood. Gara said blankly, I see. Well, that's not going to happen. I'll see you later, Gara. Naruto said, as he walked by him and placed a hand on his shoulder which shocked everyone even Gara. how did he touch me? Mother didn't protect me. Gara thought and started to follow Naruto again Tamari just got her fan and went to find Naruto, but she couldn't find him. The only thought that came to her mind was Gara must have gotten him, but she didn't hear the usual comments about Gara killing anybody yet. She assumed he hasn't met Gara yet and he just got lost so she kept up her search for him. Looking for me? Naruto asked, as he appeared behind her and screamed then swung her fan at him, but he ducked out of the way, what the hell is your problem? Tamari asked, what do you mean? Naruto asked, you can't just sneak up on me like that. I could have killed you. Tamari said, ah. Does Tamari care about me that much? 
Naruto asked and rubbed her cheek causing her to blush in embarrassment. No. Let's go. Stupid pretty boy. Tamari said and mumbled that last part, I heard that. Naruto said, as they started walking, shut up. Tamari said, hey, Tamari. A voice yelled out to her, HM? What is it, Kankuro? Tamari asked, have you seen Gara? Kankuro asked, no. I haven't seen him all day, why? Tamari asked, because people are saying he's been acting weird. They said he had some run-in with a Kanoha shinobi and the guy actually touched him without his sand reacting. Kankuro said, that would be me. Who's the girl, Tamari? Naruto asked and Tamari snickered, this is my brother, Kankuro. Kankuro, this is Naruto. He's the Kanoha shinobi I'm guessing everyone was talking about. Tamari said, that's me. So, why are you wearing makeup? Naruto asked, it's not makeup. It's war paint. Kankuro said, if you say so. Naruto said, how did you survive an encounter with Gara? Tamari asked, I don't know. He said his mother wanted my blood, but I told him it's not going to happen and then I walked away while putting my hand on his shoulder. He's been following me again. Naruto said and then sand started to blow everywhere, shit. The sandstorm's coming. We need to get home. Kankuro said, come on, Naruto. Tamari said and grabbed his hand, sure. Naruto said and followed them Kazakage Mansion, this place is huge. Naruto said as he was looking around at their house, yeah. It has like 15 rooms and 8 bathrooms. Kankuro said and Naruto whistled, wow. So, where do I sleep? Naruto asked, I'll show you. Tamari said, cool. Hey, does Gara have a room? Naruto asked, yeah. Why? Kankuro asked, because I want to do him a favor. Naruto said and showed them a seal, what is it? Kankuro asked, it's a chakra suppression seal. It was created by the fourth Hokage himself to suppress the chakra of a tailed beast from leaking out. If I can set these up all around his room, then they'll prevent Shikaku from escaping while he's asleep. Gara isn't as unstable as he seems honestly from what I can tell. Naruto said, how can you say that? He kills people who get close to him. Kankuro said, he hasn't killed you or Tamari. I'm positive that he only kills if somebody attacks him and his sand only reacts towards hostile actions towards him. If Shikaku forces his way out while he's asleep because of a faulty seal, Gara must have great mental control if he can keep the tailed beast from escaping while he's awake since it's possible for it to happen and should have happened by now. Naruto said, then how do you know your chakra suppression seals will work? Kenkuro asked, because in his book of sealing, the fourth Hokage said that he used this on the four and five tailed Jinchuriki during the third shinobi war. If it worked on them then Shikaku shouldn't be a problem. Naruto said, do it. Tamari said, Tamari. We can't trust him. He's an outsider. What if he tries to steal Shikaku from us? Kankuro asked, why the hell would I want Shikaku? I can't even seal a tailed beast away. Well, not yet at least, but I'll be able to in a few months give or take. Anyway, what do you think I'll do? Put him in my pocket and walk out? Naruto asked, I trust him, Kankuro. He was able to instantly see the problem with Gara's seal when I showed it to him. Tamari said, what was wrong with it? I thought Gara just couldn't handle the power. Kankuro said, whoever sealed Shikaku in Gara did two things wrong. Number one, they sealed it inside of him before he was even born which should never happen and I'll take a guess to say that is what actually caused your mother to die. Number two, he basically has a shitty storage scroll on his body. Naruto said, Lady Chio is the one who performed the sealing ritual. Kankuro said, well, she sucks. Naruto said, just trust him, Kankuro. Tamari said, why do you want to help Gara? Kankuro asked, because I'd do anything to make a pretty girl such as Tamari smile. Naruto said and she blushed, idiot. 
Tamari thought, if anything goes wrong, I'm blaming you. Kankuro said, sure. Now, this. Is the most important part. There will be a locking seal on the inside of his room to prevent people from coming in there. If the door opens then the suppressing seals will stop working since I'll have them set to activate when the door closes. I'll give Tamari an overriding seal just in case, but if you ever need to go in the room you need to wake him up within five minutes because that's how long it'll take the effects of the seal to wear off on Shikaku. If you can't wake him up just close the door and wait for Gara to get up. Naruto said, why does she get the seal? Kankuro asked, because she's more trustworthy than you. Naruto said, no she's not. Kankuro said, yes I am and you know it. Come on, Naruto. I'll show you Gara's room and your room. Tamari said and they walked away Tamari showed Naruto his room and Gara's room then showed him the bathrooms. Coincidentally, his room was right next to Tamari's room so he'd have to be careful so he won't go in the wrong room. They went to Gara's room and Naruto unsealed his sealing equipment and got to work. Tamari was really impressed by his skill because he looked so fluent while drawing the seals everywhere and called him a seal master, but he declined saying he was far away from being called a seal master. It took him three hours to complete everything and used his Sharingan to check for any signs of a break in the seals. That was another thing he managed to do with his Sharingan, he was able to basically zoom in and out while inspecting his ceiling or anything else. It was really helpful and it's what got him so far into his ceiling. He would check everything over before he moved to the next step. So, is it done? Tamari asked, yeah. Just a simple test run is needed before I apply the locking seal. Naruto said, what do you have to do? Tamari asked, I need Gara to come in here and go to sleep. Naruto said, uh. I don't think that's a good idea. Tamari said, don't worry. I'll be able to suppress Shikaku if he escapes or tries to. Naruto said, how? Tamari asked, secret. Just tell Gara to come inside and then you stay out. Naruto said and she sighed, okay. Tamari said and then Gara came into the room, why didn't my mother protect me from you? Gara asked, because I'm not a threat to you. I'm not trying to harm you. Now, I need you to close your eyes and start to fall asleep. Naruto said Gara stared at him for a few seconds before nodding. Gara closed his eyes and Naruto sweat dropped because he was still standing up instead of laying on the bed. As soon as Gara's eyes closed, Naruto felt Shikaku's chakra start to leak out, but the seal started to suppress the chakra and after 20 minutes then an hour, there were no signs of Shikaku trying to escape. Naruto woke Gara up and Gara was shocked that Naruto was still alive. How did you survive the monster inside of me? Gara asked, the monster never escaped. This room will help you sleep at night and not worry. About Shikaku trying to escape. Naruto said and then placed the locking seal on the door, why did you do this? Are you going to kill me in my sleep? Gara asked, no. I did this so you can have some sort of a normal life and become better. You're not the only person with a tailed beast inside of you and I believe that none of you should be treated like an outcast. Now, before you go to sleep, you'll have to channel chakra into this locking seal so nobody can get in. If the door is opened it will cause the seals to stop working and if you're sleeping, Shikaku will escape. Naruto said, I see. You hurt my sister and I'll kill you. Gara said, duly noted. Good night. Naruto said and left the room, you're okay. Tamari said and gave him a hug, yup. Everything is working perfectly. I even set up a fail safe in his room. If the seals fail, a barrier will appear and trap Shikaku while suppressing his chakra at the same time. If somebody breaks into that room then they'll die because of Gara's sand. Naruto said, thank you so much. Tamari said, you're welcome. Naruto said and Tamari yawned, good night, Naruto. Tamari said and went to her room, good night. Naruto said and went to his room two days later, well, this is it. It's been nice meeting you all. 
Naruto said, as he was at the gates with Tamari and Kankuro, but not Gara since he was still sleeping, sucks that you'll be leaving. I was going to challenge you to a spar with my puppets. Kankuro said, we still have the Chunin exams. Now that you're all entering them, I'll be looking forward to fighting you. Naruto said, so, are you going to wave now? Tamari asked, yeah. I need to save my team. After that I'll start training for the Chunin exams. Naruto said, well, I won't lose to you. I'm starting my training right away. Kankuro said, I'm sure you will. Naruto said and Kankuro left, I guess I'll see you in a few months. Tamari said and Naruto nodded, like I said, you'll be hearing from me sooner than you think. I have to go now. It was nice spending time with you, Tamari. Don't forget about our date in Kanoha. Naruto said, I won't. Tamari said and smiled, I'll be waiting. Naruto said and Tamari pulled his mask down then kissed him on the cheek causing both of them to blush a dark red, gee good luck on your mission. Bye. Tamari quickly said and ran away, uh. Thanks. Naruto said and summoned Dash, where are we headed? Dash asked, as Naruto jumped on him, land of waves. Naruto said and Dash flew off land of waves Dash managed to get Naruto to the land of waves in about 8 hours. Along the way Naruto was reading his book on creating jutsus. He was also thinking about Tamari kissing him on the cheek. He's been kissed on the cheek plenty of times by his mom and Karinai, but this one was different. He wasn't an idiot when it came to love, but he wanted to talk to Karinai first about this to be completely sure. Naruto, we have arrived. Dash said, as he landed. Thanks. I can find them from here. You head back. Naruto said and jumped off of Dash, see you later. Dash said and then Naruto walked around a bit before he found somebody, excuse me, but have you seen four four people around here? A red-haired girl, a pink-haired girl, a guy who has one eye and a boy who looks constipated with a duck-ass hairstyle? Naruto asked, uh. Yeah. They're with Tazuna at his house. Why do you ask? The man asked, I was sent here to help them out with the enemy. Naruto said, ah. Uh. Okay. Tazuna's house is right by the docks. You can't miss it. The man said, thank you. Naruto said and gave him a pouch of money, I can't take this. The man said, sure you can. I know all about Gato and what he's been doing here. Use that to feed your family. After I'm done with this mission, my personal goal is to kill Gato and put an end to his tyranny. Naruto said, thank you so much. The man said and bowed before leaving, defeat the enemy and then kill Gato. Now, let's have a team reunion. Naruto said and vanished to Zuna's house, Natsumi. You shouldn't have said that to him. Sakura said, as Natsumi just finished making a little boy cry, the little shit deserved it. He's a whiny little brat who's sheltered himself and hasn't even lifted a finger to stop Gato. He has no right to say I'll never defeat him. Natsumi said, still, I think you should apologize. Sakura said, nope. Not happening. Natsumi said and Kakashi sighed, where's Naruto when I need him? Kakashi thought and then somebody knocked on the door, were you expecting someone? Kakashi asked, at this hour? No. Tazuna said and Kakashi put his book away, alright. You and Tsunami should hide in the kitchen for now. Sasuke, Sakura and Natsumi, I'm going to slowly open the door. Do not attack unless I say otherwise. Kakashi said and stood up, you got it. Finally. Some action. Natsumi said Kakashi slowly opened the door and as usual, Sasuke didn't listen. As soon as the door was open, Sasuke grabbed the person inside and tried to stab him with a kunai. Natsumi and Sakura joined in but they were all quickly defeated and the only thing you saw was Natsumi and Sakura hanging upside down from the ceiling, 
Sasuke was on the ground with a kunai at his neck and Kakashi was holding a wrist keeping a sword from slicing his head off while holding a kunai to back of the person's head. Well that was rude. You didn't even let me introduce myself. Naruto said, Naruto. Natsumi yelled as she was struggling to get down, Naruto. Let me down. Sakura said, uh. I guess you're the backup. Kakashi said, as he let him go and Naruto got off of Sasuke, yup. That's me. Naruto said, as he put his sword up then released Natsumi and Sakura from the ceiling. Naruto. Where have you been? I can't believe you left me with Pinky and Duck Ass. Natsumi said and dramatically placed her hand over her head, I was on missions. Naruto said, I thought you were on Team 7 with us. Sakura said, I am. I'm an elite genin. Naruto said, how is he so strong? He will tell me his secrets so I can kill him. Sasuke thought, did the Hokage tell you what's going on? Kakashi asked, I read up on it on my way here. So, Zabuza Momochi, and an accomplice? Can I fight Zabuza? Naruto asked, no. I'll handle Zabuza myself. He only escaped last time because his accomplice interfered. You'll be back up just in case. Natsumi and Sasuke will be fighting the accomplice and Sakura will guard Tazuna. Think you can stay back and guard the house while we're gone and come after the threat is dealt with? Kakashi asked, sure. Naruto said and sat down, what kind of mission were you on? Sakura asked, Birank, to Suna. I would have been here sooner, but I had to wait out a sandstorm. Naruto said, how many missions have you done in the last two months? Natsumi asked, I don't know. Maybe twenty. Twenty-one including this one. Naruto said, half-breed, I demand you tell me how you got strong and give me the sword while you're at it. Sasuke said, it's funny how you think you can boss me around. Let's get something straight. The only person who can boss me around in the Uchiha clan would be the clan head and that's not you. Naruto said, I thought he was the clan head because he's from the main family. Sakura said, no. The clan head would be the oldest Uchiha remaining from the main family. Sasuke isn't the oldest. Itachi is. Technically Itachi is the clan head, but at the same time, he isn't. Naruto said, what do you mean? Kakashi asked, think about it. Who was the original leader of the Uchiha clan? Naruto asked, Madara Uchiha. Kakashi said, exactly. It would be his direct lineage that would be clan head. Sasuke isn't part of Madara's lineage. Naruto said, Madara didn't have any children though. It would have been documented if he did. Kakashi said, he had children in secret. His lineage kept going on. So, take a wild guess at who's the last of his lineage. Naruto said, it's you. Kakashi said, exactly. So, technically I'm clan head and have been ever since my mother died. Don't step out of line. I'd rather keep you alive because Mikoto was basically my aunt, but I have no problem killing you, Sasuke. Don't get on my bad side. Naruto said, wait a minute. If you're the clan head then what does that make Sasuke and this Itachi person? Natsumi asked, I did some digging and looked into that. In our clan, Sasuke would be part of the side branch. Naruto said, I don't get it. How did Sasuke's family become clan heads then? Natsumi asked, easy. It was long before Fugaku Uchiha was born but someone in his lineage killed the actual clan head. Since Madara was gone that side branch member was the strongest and nobody challenged him for the throne. My family continued to grow in secret and Fugaku didn't even know I was born until I was two months old. Naruto said, whoa. Natsumi said, is it safe for use to come out? Tazuna asked, yeah. He's our backup. Kakashi said, he's just a kid. Tazuna said, well, he's stronger than all of them and if he went all out I know he should be able to take on all three of them.
Kakashi said, this half-breed is not stronger than me. Sasuke said, oh? Then show me your Sharingan. Naruto said and Sasuke grit his teeth, he doesn't have the Sharingan. Natsumi said, what a shame. Seems you can't even call yourself an Uchiha with no Sharingan to prove it. At this point, Kakashi is more of an Uchiha than you are. Now, is there any food? I'm starving. Naruto said, this is it. I can finally see what he looks like. Sakura thought and grinned, of course. I'll bring you a plate of food. Tsunami said, uh. You better make that a few plates. He can eat as much as me. Natsumi said, no. One plate should be enough. I saw the condition of this place because of Gato. Naruto said, it's okay. We have enough to last another week. Tsunami said, no. Even after Gato is defeated, it'll still take some time before the land of waves is back on its feet. I'll take one plate and then eat breakfast in the morning while they're out at the bridge. Naruto said, if that is what you want. Tsunami said and went back to the kitchen, I just realized that you never call Kakashi sensei, sensei. Why is that? Sakura asked, this isn't a knock on Kakashi, but my mom will always be my only sensei. Sure other people may teach me something, but I don't think I'll ever call them sensei. Naruto said, HN, pathetic. Sasuke said, this is coming from the same boy who would throw a temper tantrum whenever his brother had a mission and couldn't train him. You should be the last person talking about being pathetic. You used your clan status and the people's ego to get them to train you growing up and you're still weaker than me. You may train hard, but I train smart. Naruto said and Tsunami came with his food, here you go. Tsunami said, thank you. Naruto said and everyone looked at him, come on. Come on. Come on. Sakura thought, I wonder if this is how people feel when I'm eating. Kakashi thought, I wonder if he's gonna do the thing when he eats through his mask. Natsumi thought, as she was always fascinated by that Naruto picked up his chopsticks and pulled his mask, making everyone lean in, but then we put his food over the top of his mask into his mouth. Everyone fell over at such an idiotic move and Sakura yelled. Are you kidding me? Sakura asked, what? Naruto asked, take OFF the stupid mask. Sakura yelled, I don't want to. Naruto said, please. Sakura asked and put on a puppy dog face, fine. Naruto said and put his chopsticks down, yes. Sakura said and leaned forward, underneath this mask. Naruto said, uh huh. Sakura said with anticipation, is another mask. Pretty cool, right? Naruto asked as he pulled down his mask, now I see how people feel when I do it. I can't believe he got me with my own thing. Kakashi thought, are you kidding me? I did all of that for this. Come here. Sakura yelled she leapt at Naruto with the intent to rip his mask off his face, but Naruto switched with Sasuke at the last minute without them noticing. Sakura opened her eyes and saw her lips were connected with Sasuke's. Her eyes widened and her mind went blank as she felt Sasuke's hands on her butt. I'm kissing Sasuke. Sakura thought and then passed out on top of Sasuke, she can die happy now. Natsumi said, not exactly. Naruto said, why not? She kissed him and she's happy. Natsumi said, no. Kissing him isn't the only thing she wants from Sasuke, but it seems you don't understand it yet. I won't poison your young mind. Naruto said, young? We're the same age. Natsumi said, I'm sixty days older than you. That's two months or if you want to be technical, 1,440 hours which is equivalent to 86,400 minutes. That's three different ways of me saying I'm older than you. Naruto said, how can he remember all of that? Kakashi thought, you get on my nerves. Natsumi said and stormed away, all in a day's work. Now, where's the little boy that I heard Natsumi yell at? Naruto asked, on the docks. 
Kakashi said, I'll be back. Naruto said, Docs, hey, kid. What's your name? Naruto asked, Inari. Inari said, nice. So, why'd she yell at you? Naruto asked, because I told her she doesn't know how it feels to struggle since she came from a ninja village and that Gato is too powerful for her. You all are just going to die like everyone else. Inari said, I see. Well, let me prove you wrong on both instances. Natsumi unfortunately does know what it's like to struggle. I won't go into detail about her life, but she's basically hated by our entire village minus a few for something out of her control when she was only a few hours old. Now, Gato isn't strong. What makes you think he is? Naruto asked, he has goons working for him. I saw what happened to the silver-haired guy in there. If he can't beat them, then nobody can. Inari said, that's where you're wrong. Kakashi had the guy beat from what I understand, but he didn't know about the accomplice. Now, Kakashi will fight the guy again and I'm sure he'll win. This time it'll be one-on-one -on -one since Sasuke and Natsumi will be fighting the accomplice. As for Gato and his goons. Well, I've seen his goons around here and none of them can do this. Naruto said and used the fireball jutsu as a demonstration, wow. Inari said, like I said, his goons aren't strong. They're just common street thugs that pick on the weak. Tomorrow Gato will fall and the land of waves will be free from his tyranny. Naruto said and walked away Naruto went inside to see Sakura still on the floor and figured Sasuke must have gone to sleep. He picked her up then took her to the room she was sharing with Natsumi and knocked before leaving. He opted to sleep on the roof of the house and enjoy the cool breeze of the night. Naruto woke up early in the morning before everyone. Else and decided to get him some training done since he hasn't trained in a few days. He worked on his chakra control and taijutsu skills, but he didn't really push himself like he normally does due to him being needed at the bridge later on. He returned to the house after a few hours and saw everyone was up already. So, everyone's ready I see. Naruto said, yup. We're totally going to kick some ass. Natsumi said and gave Naruto a fist bump, you better. Can't have you losing on your first mission out of the village. Don't worry though, I'll let the old man know you said I can become Hokage for you. Naruto said, what? Hell no. I'm becoming Hokage. Natsumi said, I don't know. Ruling over the village does seem interesting. I might decide to become Hokage myself. Naruto said and she gasped, you can't. You said you don't want to do it. Natsumi said, I'm just kidding. I don't want to be stuck in some office all day. Naruto said and Natsumi sighed in relief, good. For a second I thought I'd have to kick your ass. Natsumi said, it's not very ladylike to swear, Natsumi. Sakura said, it's also not ladylike to try and spy on Sasuke in the shower, you pervert. Natsumi said and Sakura blushed, I wasn't. Sakura said, right and I don't have a ramen addiction. Natsumi said, anyway, take care of yourself out there. Don't get too reckless. Naruto said, I'm the future Hokage. I can handle this. Natsumi said, well, Naruto. I'll leave them in your hands. Remember, once the coast is clear, meet us at the bridge to back us up if necessary. Kakashi said, sure. Naruto said, are you sure you're able to go? You're still recovering yourself. Tsunami said, why? Do I look like I'll fall over? I'll be fine. I just needed a few days to recover. Kakashi said, all right, come on. Let's go. Tazuna said and they left, come on, you too. Let's get inside. Naruto said, will they be okay? Tsunami asked, they'll be fine. Kakashi is an elite jonin, Natsumi is borderline low chunin level and the same with Sasuke. Naruto said, what about Sakura? Tsunami asked, well, if she screams loud enough I'm sure she can make somebody bleed from their eye, ears, and nose. 
Naruto said, that's not really reassuring. Tsunami said, yeah, I know. It can't be helped though. She doesn't like to train. Naruto said, do you train every day? Inari asked, no. I train every other day. It's important to let your body take a break. Naruto said and Tsunami brought him some breakfast, here you go. I noticed you didn't eat this morning. Tsunami said, thank you. You're really kind. Naruto said, you're welcome. Breakfast is important, so I can't have you missing out on it. Tsunami said, I agree. Inari said and Naruto chuckled, tell me, Inari. Are you ready to become a hero and help free this place from Gato? Naruto asked me. A hero? I don't know. Inari said, he's too young to be fighting. Tsunami said, he doesn't have to. I know something that will. Work. Naruto said, what do you have in mind? Tsunami asked, simple, after I deal with our two guests that are about to arrive, you two should gather as much help as possible with anything they can use as a weapon and meet us at the bridge. Who knows, if we don't get to him first, you all may be able to get some hits in on Gato. Naruto said, do you think they'll help us? Tsunami asked, of course. Just tell them that the Kanoha ninja are fighting Gato and I'm sure they'll come to the bridge. Naruto said, I'll see what we can do. Tsunami said, what can we use as weapons? Gato and his goons took everything. Inari said, use whatever you can think of. Naruto said, as the door was literally cut to pieces revealing two men carrying swords and one had an eye patch while the other one had a purple hat on, well, what do we have here? One of the men asked, well, we have three people trying to enjoy their day until you two fuckers decided to show up. Naruto said, it was a rhetorical question. The guy said, I know, but I still felt like answering. Naruto said, enough. Should we take all three of them? The guy asked, no. Gato only wanted the daughter as his hostage. His partner answered, so, you work for Gato? Tell me, are you two the only ones here? Naruto asked, yeah. Now hand over the lady and I might decide to let you live. The one with the hat said, Tsunami, would you like to go with them? Naruto asked, of course not. Tsunami said and pulled Inari behind her, there you have it boys. She doesn't want to go with you. Now, you have two options. Either leave and never come back or die. Naruto said, you're just a kid. We can handle this. The guy with the eye patch said, Tsunami, cover Inari's eyes. Inari, cover your ears. Naruto said, okay. Tsunami said and they did as told, now, let's have some fun. Naruto said he kicked both of the intruders out of the house and unsealed his sword before following them. They got their swords out and started swinging wildly at Naruto who blocked or dodged every single swipe. Eventually they grew tired and Naruto went on the offensive. He appeared behind the one with the eye patch and stabbed him in the back through his heart. The other one tried to attack Naruto from behind, but Naruto ducked and the guy with the eye patch had his arm sliced off. Naruto kicked the guy in his knee which caused him to fall to the ground and then Naruto pinned him to the ground with multiple kunai and shuriken. W what are you? The guy asked, a ninja. Why did Gato want Tsunami as a hostage? Naruto asked, I'm not telling you anything. The guy said and Naruto stabbed him in both hands with a kunai making the guy scream, I won't ask again. Now answer the question. Naruto said and activated his Sharingan, H he wanted to use her as a hostage to make Tazuna hand himself over to kill him. The guy said, are there more of you? Naruto asked, w we were meant to meet the rest of them at the bridge. We. We're going to kill Tazuna then kill Zabuza and his helper. The guy said, what of the other women and little girls that I heard were kidnapped? Naruto asked and the guy paled, I I don't know. The guy said and Naruto stabbed him in both knees, you're lying. Naruto said, okay. We use them for sex. 
I didn't touch any of the kids. Gatto did that. He only wanted the ones that were well developed. The man said, all of you are dead. Naruto said and removed his head from his shoulders then threw both bodies in the water, is it safe now? Tsunami asked, yeah. You can come out here. Naruto said, where'd the two guys go? Inari asked, they decided to go for a swim. The rest of his goons are going to the bridge. Gather as many people as you can and meet me there. I have two weapons for you right here. Naruto said and gave them the swords, don't these belong to the bad guys? Inari asked, well, before they went on their swim, they were kind enough to leave them behind. Now, I need to hurry up and get to the bridge. Naruto said and ran off, he's fast. Inari said, come on, Inari. Let's go gather some people. Tsunami said bridge Naruto made it to the bridge just in time to see Kakashi about to kill Zabuza, Sasuke was out for the count, Sakura was guarding Tazuna with a kunai in each hand and Natsumi was staring at the body that laid next to Kakashi. Naruto saw Kakashi about to use his infamous Chidori on Zabuza and knew he wouldn't make it in time so he used his Manjikyu Sharingan and switched places with Kakashi. What the? Who are you? Zabuza asked, Naruto. What are you doing? Sakura asked, I need Zabuza to know something. Naruto said, what is it? Zabuza asked, Gato was going to betray you after this fight. Him and his people are already here. Naruto said and then clapping was heard, well, well. Look at this. Seems like they've done quite a job on you, Zabuza. You look like yesterday's sashimi. I must say that I'm disappointed. A short man said and had an army behind him, what is the meaning of this, Gato? Who are these people behind you? Zabuza asked, he's here to betray you. Whatever he promised you at the end of this, he wasn't going to pay you. Naruto said and healed Zabuza's arms a bit so he could use his sword, he's right. You've become too expensive for me and you'll die right here on this bridge, Zabuza. Of course even these thugs cost something, so if you could manage to slaughter a few before you die, I'd appreciate it. Think you can do that, demon of the mist? Look at you, you're about as demonic as a wet kitten. Gato said and his goons laughed, there's so many of them. Natsumi thought, well, well, Kakashi. It would seem that our fight is at an end. Since I am no longer in Gato's employ, Tazuna is safe. We have no quarrel. Zabuza said and picked up his sword, yeah, I suppose you're right. Kakashi said and Gato walked over the body on the ground, that reminds me, you little punk. You grabbed me and nearly broke my arm. I've been meaning to repay you for that. Gato said and kicked the body, Haku. Natsumi said and started to run towards him, but Naruto stopped her, wait. Naruto said, what are you doing? Natsumi said, just wait a bit longer. Gato will get what's coming to him. Naruto said and she nodded, if only you were still alive. That would have been even better. Gato said and kicked Haku again, boy. Zabuza said, what is it? Naruto asked, help me take these fuckers down. Zabuza said and Naruto unsealed his sword, sure. Naruto said, nice sword. Zabuza said, thanks. Naruto said and threw a kunai into Gato's shoulder, ah. Kill them. Gato said and retreated behind his goons Naruto looked at Zabuza who nodded at him and they charged into the army of goons. Naruto easily avoided every attack coming towards him thanks to his Sharingan and he would cut them down with ease. Zabuza was different since he was headed straight for Gato tearing down everyone that got in his way. Gato tried to escape, but he was at the edge of the bridge that wasn't completed yet and was shaking in fear as Naruto and Zabuza got closer to him. Zabuza had multiple weapons stabbed into his back, but he ignored them and when he finally reached Gato, he stabbed him right through the stomach and then kicked him into the water before collapsing on the ground. Is he dead? Natsumi asked, no. He's still fighting it. When you live like a warrior, this is how it ends. 
Kakashi said, Hey, Natsumi. Look. Sasuke's all right. Sakura said and Sasuke gave her a slight wave, Well, well, will wonders never cease? Amazing. Kakashi said, Hey. Don't get too comfortable. This party ain't over yet. Who's gonna pay us now that Gato's gone? A goon asked, No way we're gonna leave here empty handed. We'll just have to hit that village and see what they've got for us. Another goon said, That's not good. Kakashi said, They won't be leaving this bridge. Naruto said, And then an arrow landed in front of them, There's just one thing you're forgetting about. Before you set one foot in our village, you'll have to go through all of us. A villager said as Inari showed up with a lot of people, I see you made it, Inari. Naruto said, well, heroes show up at the last minute, you know? Inari asked, they've all come. The whole village. Tazuna said shadow clone Jutsu Naruto, Kakashi and Natsumi each made their own army of shadow clones and Gato's army of goons grew scared. They all started to scamble and jumped off the bridge hoping to get to the boats for an escape, but Naruto used the electromagnetic murder on the water and killed them. Victory! Inari yelled and everyone cheered, sounds like it's over. Zabuza said, as Kakashi walked over to him, yeah. Kakashi said, Kakashi? I have a favor to ask. Zabuza said, what is it? Kakashi asked, take me to him. I need to see him one last time before I go. Zabuza said, sure. Kakashi said and took the weapons out of his back before placing him next to Haku, hey, it's snowing. Natsumi said, as snow was falling, thank you, Kakashi. Zabuza said, as Kakashi placed him on the ground, Naruto, shouldn't you try to heal him? Natsumi asked, no. For someone like Zabuza, healing him would be a slap to the face. He wanted a warrior's death and who am I to take that from him? This was his final act as the demon of the mist. Naruto said, Haku, you were always by my side. The least I can do is be beside you at the end. I know it won't happen, but I wish I could go where you're going. Hey, kid. Zabuza said, yeah? Naruto asked, not you, the redhead. Zabuza said, me? What do you want from me? Natsumi asked, during the week I was recovering, Haku couldn't stop talking about this girl he met in the woods. He knows you're a good person and ever since I met him, I've always gone against his word, but just this once I'll listen to him. He had a feeling that this would be our final days and asked for you to have something. I want you to take my sword and continue its legacy. Go on and pick it up. Zabuza said and Natsumi looked at Naruto, go ahead. Naruto said and Natsumi went to the sword then picked it up with ease, now what, Zabuza? Natsumi asked and everyone looked at Zabuza who was no longer breathing with a smile on his face, come on. Let's make a grave sight for them. Tazuna said few days later after the events of the bridge, Tazuna and his crew dug a grave for Zabuza and Haku. The gravestone was in the shape of Zabuza's sword and had Haku's mask carved into the center of the blade. Natsumi made sure to visit the grave every day out of respect since she didn't know when she'd be back. Naruto, over the past few days, was helping rebuild the village as he managed to find Gato's hideout and retrieved all of the money and people he had taken. Naruto and Zabuza were given a statue with both of them holding their swords over their shoulders. We could have never finished the bridge without you. I can't tell you how much we're going to miss you. Tazuna said, as everyone was gathered at the completed bridge, please be careful. Tsunami said, for your help getting our village from underneath the tyranny of Gato, we've decided to call this the Hero Bridge and honor every single one of you. Zabuza and Haku will also be honored as well. Tazuna said, thank you for everything. Kakashi said, by Naruto. A group of girls said and Naruto scratched the back of his head, by girls. Naruto said and the girl squealed, he said bye to me. No, he was talking to me. As if. He clearly made eye contact with me. Well, would you look at that? 
Naruto has a group of fangirls. Natsumi said and elbowed Naruto in the side, you're one to talk. I've seen you hiding from the group of fanboys following you around. Naruto said and she shivered, this must be how Sasuke feels. Natsumi said, I doubt it. He loves the attention. Naruto said, Naruto. Natsumi. Come on. Sakura said, as they already started walking, those motherfuckers didn't even bother to wait for us. Natsumi said, well, look at it like this. The sooner you make it to Konoha, the sooner you can see whoever it is you have a crush on. Naruto said and Natsumi had a huge blush on her face, I I don't know what you're talking about. Natsumi said, if you say so. Naruto said, wait a minute. At least I have interest in somebody. You don't even look at girls. Natsumi said, I look at girls. I just don't do it a lot. Naruto said, oh really? Name one girl that you've looked at in Konoha. Natsumi said, Ino. Naruto said, she doesn't count. You two are basically best friends. Natsumi said, this was before we became friends. Naruto said, oh? You were thinking about dating her? Natsumi asked, I was, but then I lost interest in her. Naruto said, are you calling her ugly? Natsumi said, what? No. Ino is very pretty, but she's just not the one for me I guess you can say. Besides, on my missions I've run into plenty of attractive girls. Naruto said, I don't understand why they even bother. It's not like you'll actually pay attention to them. Natsumi said, that's not true. I went on a date with one of them for my recent mission. I even took my mask off to eat. Naruto said, you went on a date? With who? What's her name? Natsumi asked, will you be quiet? Naruto asked, sorry, but who is she? Natsumi asked, you'll find out in a few months. She's going to be taking the Chunin exams. Naruto said, ah, uh, come one. Just give me one little detail. Natsumi said, no. In some ways you're just like Ino when it comes to gossip. The last thing I need is the council getting involved trying to do some stupid political marriage due to her status in her village. Plus we don't even know if we'll actually date each other, so just keep quiet. Naruto said, fine. Natsumi said, as they caught up with the rest of the team, what were the two of you talking about? Sakura asked, we were talking about how long it takes you to wash your big ass forehead, Pinky. Natsumi said, what did you say tomato head? Sakura yelled, you fucking heard me. Natsumi yelled, will these two just get along already? Kakashi thought and then felt somebody tap him on the shoulder, HM? Can I help you? Kakashi asked, yeah. I'm out of books. Got anything for me to read? Naruto asked, I don't think my books are meant for someone your age. Kakashi said, well, technically I'm an adult. Naruto said, just don't let Karinai see you with this. Kakashi said and gave him one of his Aika Aika books, who the hell wrote this? Naruto asked as he was reading it, Jiraiya of the San Nin. It's pretty good, right? Kakashi asked and Naruto threw the book at him, I've read children's books better written than that crap. Naruto said, first he asks me for a book and then he insults it. Kakashi thought, so, Naruto. Let me ask you something. Sakura said. What is it? Naruto asked, will you ever remove the mask? I mean it's not fair that Natsumi is the only person who saw you without it on. Sakura said, she's not the only person to see me without my mask on, but to answer your question, I'll be removing my mask soon. Naruto said, why do you wear it anyway? Sakura asked, so people won't recognize who my father is. The reason I can't show you specifically is because you're too smart and you'll figure out who my father is then tell Ino who can't keep a secret to save her life. Naruto said, what does your father have to do with this? Sakura asked, let's just say he still has enemies from the Third Shinobi War even though he's dead and they'd do anything to get back at him, including killing his children. 
I could take it off now, but I'd rather be able to take on a jonin before I do. Naruto said, someone like Kakashi-sensei? Sakura asked, I'm still some years off before I'm able to defeat Kakashi. He's a legend in the bingo books. He's nearly an S-rank shinobi and if I had to guess, the only people stronger in the village would be the old man and the two Sanin members. Naruto said, you're that strong, Kakashi-sensei? Sakura asked, well, I wouldn't go that far. Kakashi said, given Naruto's current strength he could surpass me in a few years. I can tell he's nearly a jonin level shinobi himself. Kakashi thought, then out of our team, who's the strongest? Sakura asked, it's me. Sasuke said, in your dreams, duck butt. Naruto's easily the strongest one on this team and I'm second. Natsumi said, actually, you're third. Sasuke is stronger than you, but only by a bit. Sakura is the weakest, but she's not really a fighter. Naruto said, gee thanks. Sakura said, there's no way you're stronger than me. I've surpassed you thanks to my Sharingan. Sasuke said and revealed his Sharingan with one Tomo in one eye and two in the other, that's cute. Sasuke finally awakened his Sharingan, but you're eight years too late compared to me. Naruto said and activated his Sharingan, I don't get it. Why does Naruto's Sharingan look different? Sakura asked, that's because my Sharingan is fully matured. I awakened it at five and it only took me two years to fully mature it. It could have been done sooner, but I wasn't training only on my Sharingan. Naruto said, tell me how you did it. I need the power to kill him. Sasuke said, no and for the record, you're lifetimes away from being able to kill Itachi and everyone knows that. He's probably stronger than Kakashi by now and as I've said before, he's no slouch either. Naruto said, this is gonna take a turn for the worse and for once I don't want to see Sasuke get his ass kicked. So, what's everyone doing when they get back to the village? Natsumi asked, maybe train a bit. Naruto said, how about you, Sakura? Natsumi asked, why should I tell you my plans? I don't even like you. Sakura said and flipped her hair at Natsumi, you stupid pink. Haired banshee. I just asked a damn question. Natsumi said, what did you call me? Sakura asked, you heard me. Natsumi said and then they started to argue again, I probably should have taken that Chunin promotion when it was offered to me a few weeks ago. Naruto thought Konoha Hokage office, mission accomplished, old man. Natsumi said as they entered the room, show some respect to the Hokage. Sakura said, shut up. Natsumi said, these two have been at it the entire trip back. Kakashi thought, so, did the monkey give you the reply, old man? Naruto asked, Naruto. You can't call him an old man. Sakura said, I've always called him old man. It's nothing new and he doesn't have a problem with it. Naruto said, it's quite alright, Sakura. I've known the two of them since they were babies. To answer your question, Naruto, yes the monkey did give me the reply and he also told me something else that happened in Suna. Kurinai and Enko also know about this. Hiruzen said, you stooged me out. Naruto said, as his eye twitched, no. They just happened to be in the room when the monkey showed up. Now, Kakashi, I assume there's an explanation as to why Natsumi is carrying around the Kubikurabocho. Hiruzen said, I forgot I had this thing. Natsumi said and everyone just looked at her, yes. With his last breath Zabuza entrusted the Kubikurabocho. Kakashi said, I see. Other than Zabuza and his accomplice, were there any other problems on the mission? Hiruzen asked, yes and I'd like to file a complaint. Natsumi said, what is it? Hiruzen asked, the pink banshee almost blew my eardrums out with her annoying ass voice. Shouldn't that fall under attacking a teammate? Natsumi asked, I did not. Sakura screeched and Natsumi covered her ears, see? She's doing it again. Natsumi said, as she dramatically fell to the ground and Hiruzen looked at Naruto, just ignore her. 
they've been like this the entire trip back. I'd say it's the beginning of a new friendship. Naruto said, what? As if I'd ever be friends with her. Natsumi and Sakura said at the same time which caused them to glare at each other anyway, other than Zabuza, nothing else important happened. Kakashi said and Hiruzen nodded, I see. All of you are dismissed except for Naruto. I need him for a mission. Hiruzen said, by old man. Natsumi said as she left them room, show him some respect. Sakura said, how about you stay out of my business and grow some boobs? You flat-chested cutting board? Natsumi said, what did you just say? Sakura yelled, I didn't stutter, thin piece of paper. Natsumi yelled, that's IT. Sakura yelled and when the door closed you heard them starting to fight, they're going to be such great friends. Naruto said and Hiruzen chuckled, yes, they will become great friends. Hiruzen said, so, what's the mission? Naruto asked, I have an S-ranked mission for you. Hiruzen said, you know, with all these S-ranked missions you'd think I was an Umbu member. Naruto said, this is only your fourth S-ranked mission. Hiruzen said, fine. What do I have to do? Naruto asked, I have a feeling we have some spies in our village. Somebody has been doing some digging around our classified files. Most of them are around missions that should only be accessible to me and the Jonin instructors. I have reason to believe it may be somebody from an unknown village and one from IWA. Hiruzen said, IWA? What makes you say that? Naruto asked, one of the spies tried to break the seal regarding your father and Kushina Uzumaki. I need you to find out who it is. I want weekly updates on this. I'll send you out on missions, but when you are in the village, this mission must be worked on. Hiruzen said, give me until the end of the day and I'll have this figured out. When do they usually look at the files? Naruto asked, late in the night when the building is closed. There is a hole in our security and these two must be at least jonin level ninja. Your stealth skills are the best in this village outside of Natsumi which is why I'm assigning you this mission. Hiruzen said, I'll get it done. What do I do when I find out who it is? Naruto asked, I'll give you further directions after that. I have a suspicion that one or both of them will be in the Chunin exams if they are after something. The one I suspect is from IWA may come after you or Natsumi, so I want you to up your training. Hiruzen said, you got it. Naruto said, you're dismissed. You may want to stop by Kurinai's house. She is waiting for you. Hiruzen said, of course she is. Naruto said and vanished Kurinai's apartment after leaving the Hokage Tower, Naruto made a few stops along the way to get some food. He picked up Anko and Kurinai's favorites so they wouldn't grill him too badly, but hopefully Anko had to leave and that would just leave him and Kurinai. He stood outside of her door and before he could use the key, the door swung open and he was thrown into the apartment. Well, that was rude. To think I made sure to stop and grab both of your favorite foods just to get treated like a rag doll. Naruto said, don't think that food will help you this time young man. Kurinai said, hold on, Kurinai. How much food are we talking were? Anko asked, two weeks of dango and red bean soup for Anko and two weeks worth of vodka and takawasa for Kurinai. However, given the way I was just treated, I might take it back. Naruto said and then he was pinned to the wall by some kanai thanks to Anko, now, you aren't taking anything back. Anko said and grabbed her food, you have some explaining to do. Why didn't you tell us you had a girlfriend? Kurinai asked, because I don't. Naruto said and took his mask off, then why were you with her? Anko asked, I knocked her down and we had a brief argument which somehow turned into her asking me out on a date. We ate food, laughed and then she let me stay at her house with her brothers to wait out the sandstorm. Naruto said, I hope you slept in your own bed. Kurinai said, I did. I basically had my own room. Naruto said, so, what's her name? Kurinai asked, Temari. Naruto said, Temari? 
why does that name sound familiar? Enko asked, I don't know, but I've heard it before as well. Kurinai said, she's the Kazakage's daughter. Naruto said, what? Kurinai and Enko yelled, what? She's the Kazakage's daughter. Big deal. Naruto said, that's a huge deal. Do you know what he'll do to you if you break her heart? Enko asked, nothing. He doesn't care. Her youngest brother is the one who threatened me, but I don't even know if we'll make it that far. I'd appreciate it if you two will keep this between us. I don't want the council finding out about this. Naruto said, why not? Kurinai asked, because they'd try to turn this into a political marriage and I'd rather not lose my ninja license for beating them half to death. When I get married, I'll marry the girl I love and that's it. Naruto said, fine. I'll keep it a secret. Enko said, me too. So, do you like her? Kurinai asked, I don't know. Naruto said, does she like you? Enko asked, I think so. She did something that made me feel weird. Naruto said and that got their attention, what did she do? Enko asked, well, when I was about to leave, she pulled my mask down and gave me a kiss on the cheek before running away. It made me feel weird. Like I know the two of you used to give me kisses on the cheek, but this one felt different. Naruto said, our little Naruto is becoming a man. Enko said and started to fake cry, ignoring her behavior, that just means she likes you. Kurinai said, then why didn't she do it earlier? She was around me every day I was in Suna. Naruto said, maybe she was scared and figured that she wouldn't see you again so she decided to do it. Enko said, is that what you did to get Irika to date you? Naruto asked, oh no. I took that stallion home and rode him into the sunrise. Enko said, I shouldn't have asked. Naruto said, wait. You understood that reference, but couldn't understand Tamari kissing you? Enko asked, outside of you two I've never been kissed before. Naruto said, so, do you like her? Kurinai asked, I don't know. I think so. I'll know for sure when she comes to Konoha for the Chunin exams. Naruto said, oh? Are you taking her out on a date? Enko asked, in fact I am. Naruto said, I can't believe it. Your very first girlfriend. Enko said, she's not my girlfriend. Naruto said, what do you plan on doing? Kurinai asked, I don't know. Maybe show her around the village. Well, the good parts at least and maybe to the Hokage monument. Don't bother following me. I can sense people so don't forget that. Naruto said and put his mask back on, fine, but I want details after it's done. Kurinai said, yeah. Yeah. I know. Naruto said, wait a minute. She knows what you look like. You only met her once. How come she gets to see? Your face on the first day? Enko asked, well, she asked and we were eating. It would have been rude to eat with it on. Naruto said and then a puff of smoke went off revealing a small dragon, I have a message for you, Naruto. The dragon said and coughed up a scroll, it's weird how you can do that and not have any saliva on the scroll, Tatsu. Naruto said, that's what makes me such a nice delivery dragon. Wait. What's that smell? Is there a snake here? Let me kill it. Tatsu said and Naruto calmed her down, relax. Do you remember the person I told you about who was betrayed by Orochimaru? Naruto asked, yes. Tatsu said, meet my sister, Anko Mitarashi. She's not allied with them and she can't summon the snakes either, but she can use some snake jutsus. Naruto said, I see. My apologies, Anko. Tatsu said and Anko got over her shock of seeing a dragon, oh. Uh, sure. It's okay. Anko said, I'll summon you when I write the reply. Naruto said, see ya. Tatsu said and went up in smoke, Naruto, what was that? Kurinai asked, are you blind? 
It was a small dragon. Naruto said and Kurinai's eye twitched, how did you get the dragon contract? I heard they only had one summoner before. Enko said, that one summoner was my mom. As for how I got the contract. I found a dragon wounded in the forest on my way to Suna and then he explained to me about the war Manda started against the slugs, dragons and toads. Long story short I was able to sign the dragon contract. Naruto said, of course. Leave it to you to find an injured dragon and get the contract. Enko said, I just have good luck. Anyway, is Yuga around? I need a favor. Naruto said, she should be at home right now. Today's the start of her two-week vacation after a three-month S-ranked mission. Kurinai said, thanks. Naruto said and vanished Yugao apartment, I know you're home Yugao. Kurinai already told me you were home. Naruto said and then the door opened, what do you want, Naruto? I'm on vacation. Yugao said, how would you like to train somebody with their sword? Naruto asked, you don't need my help anymore. Yugao said, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about Natsumi. Naruto said, I'll pass. Yugao said, fine. I guess I'll get somebody else to train the new wielder of the Kubikuribocho. Naruto said and walked away, but Yugao appeared in front of him, what did you just say? Yugao asked, does it matter? You said you'll pass. Naruto said and Yugao grabbed him by his collar, Enko's smart mouth rubbed off on you and I don't like it. Now, tell me what you just said or I'll give you a personal reminder as to why I'm the Umbu captain. Yugao said, fine. Zabuza gave her the Kubikuribocho after he died on our last mission. I don't think she'll like it if Hei trained her because he coughs after every sentence and she has a bit of a short fuse. Naruto said, that's an understatement. Yugao said anyway, you're the best kenjutsu user in Kanoha, so I thought you'd like to add training her to your resume. Naruto said, tell her to meet me at Ikaraku's tomorrow at noon. Yugao said and went back to her apartment, so Naruto created a shadow clone, go tell Natsumi the news. I need to head to Sato's shop. Naruto said and the clone vanished Higarashi Ninja Store, yo. Old man Sato. Are you here? Naruto asked, Naruto. What can I do for you today? Sato asked, I need some jutsus. Do you have anything higher than C rank? Naruto asked, in fact I do. Just got the approval to sell copies of some scrolls the other day and already made some copies. Take your pick. Sato said and pulled out three boxes of scrolls, color arranged scrolls. Naruto asked, trust me. I've been in this business a long time and the amount of ninja that come in here to return a jutsu that wasn't right for them because it was the wrong chakra nature gets really annoying. Sato said, Dad. I'm back. A voice yelled, over here, Ten Ten. Sato said, who's this? Ten Ten asked, my number one customer. Sato said, Ten Ten Higarashi, nice to meet you. Ten Ten said, Naruto Uchiha. Naruto said, so, what are you doing here? Ten Ten asked, buying some ninjutsu scrolls. Naruto said, you're a ninja. Ten Ten asked, I know I'm taller than you, but I'm sure you can see the headband on my head. Naruto said, no need for the sarcastic answer. When did you graduate? Ten Ten asked, two months ago. Naruto said, ah. You're a rookie genin. That's so cute. Ten Ten said, I'm not a regular genin. Naruto said, oh. Then what are you? Ten Ten asked, I'm an elite genin. Naruto said, that doesn't exist. Ten Ten said, actually it does. The only other person in Kanoha history to achieve that rank is the fourth Hokage. Sato said, then why haven't I heard of it? Ten Ten asked, because the rank was so rare since only one person got it. An elite genin is for somebody that is strong enough to become a chunin, but lacks the field experience for promotion. Sato said, does that mean he can't compete in the chunin exams? 
Ten-Ten asked, I can still compete. I was never made chunin and I declined the promotion when it was offered to me. Naruto said, well, you better hope I'm not your opponent. Ten-Ten said, I know. I'd hate to beat such a weak opponent. I'll see you later, old man Sato. Naruto said and vanished, weak? I'll show him weak. Dad, I want the sword that's behind that glass case. Ten-Ten said and pointed at the case, but it was gone, I'm afraid I can't let you have it. The rightful owner of the sword has claimed it. Sato said, you said your friend died years ago during the Nine Tails attack. How could he come and claim it? Ten-Ten asked, he didn't, but his son did. Sato said, who is his son? Maybe I can get the sword from him. Ten-Ten said, sorry, but I can't reveal who this person is. However, I'm sure he'll be in the Chunin exams. Sato said, do you think he'll let me have it? Ten-Ten asked, no. That sword is one of the last. Things his father made and I have a feeling he made it specifically for his son since he wasn't much of a kenjutsu user as he focused mainly on ninjutsu and fuinjutsu. Sato said, well, maybe you can make me one just like it. Ten-Ten said, I can't. I've tried everything and the sword was bad. I don't know how or what he used, but that sword is one of a kind. Sato said, oh man. I guess I'll just have to make my own special sword then. Ten-Ten said, you already have a ton of swords though. Actually, you have every single weapon available in Konoha. That and you're skilled a bit in Fuinjutsu. You're already a unique Kunoichi. Sato said, thanks dad, but I know you could feel the power coming from that sword. Ten-Ten said and Sato chuckled, well, it was created by a powerful person. I've got an order to finish up. Do you mind watching the counter? Sato asked, sure. It'll give me an excuse to not train with the two idiots. Ten-Ten said Naruto as he was walking around the village, Naruto looked through a few of his jutsu scrolls and realized the lack of lightning jutsus he had. If that was his strongest chakra nature, he wanted to have some strong jutsus for it. All he needed now was to find Kakashi since he was the best lightning user in Konoha. He searched for Kakashi's chakra and sighed as Kakashi was standing right behind him. You know it's rude to creep up on people like that. Especially with your reputation. Naruto said, my reputation? Kakashi asked, you're a grown man who walks around reading porn and you just snuck up behind a 13-year-old boy. I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this. Naruto said and Kakashi sweat dropped, right. So, what seems to be the problem? Why were you looking for me? Kakashi asked, how do you know I was looking for you? Naruto asked, you were talking to yourself out loud and I overheard that you needed to look for me. Kakashi said, right. I need your help. Naruto said, I am supposed to be your teacher. What can I do for you? Kakashi asked, I need some lightning jutsus and you're the best lightning user in Konoha. Naruto said, lightning huh? How much chakra do you have? Kakashi asked, I don't know. A lot. Naruto said, I see. How fast are you? Kakashi asked, with or without my resistance seals. Naruto asked, both. Kakashi said, well, I'd say low chunin with them on and low to mid jonin with them off. Naruto said, you've completed all the steps for properly controlling your chakra nature? Kakashi asked, yeah. Naruto said, meet me at training ground 7 tomorrow at 6 a.m. We'll be training all day. Kakashi said, do you mean 6 a.m. normal people time or 6 a.m. our time? Naruto asked, uh. Our time. Kakashi said and went up in smoke, all right. 6 a.m. training. Naruto said, Naruto. A voice yelled and he turned around, hmm? What is it, Ino? Naruto asked, as Ino and Sakura came up to him, is it true? Ino asked, uh. I need a bit more to go on. Naruto said, did Sakura kiss? Sasuke on your last mission? 
Ino asked, yeah. Naruto said and Ino screamed, how could you let that happen? Ino asked, what the hell was I supposed to do? Jump in front of Sasuke to take the kiss. No offense, Sakura, but I don't want you kissing me. Naruto said, none taken. Sakura said, if we're finished here, I need to go do something. Naruto said, don't you understand how serious this is? Ino asked, not really. Actually, I don't even care to be honest with you. Naruto said, B but I was supposed to be Sasuke's first kiss. Ino said, you've known him for like 7 to 8 years and had a crush on him the entire time. You had plenty of time to be his first kiss. Just let her have this one. I mean, she did kiss Kiba, after all. Naruto said and they both paled, I guess you're right. At least it was before he licked Akamaru's ass. Ino said, can I go now? Naruto asked, we were about to have some barbecue with all of the people from our class. You should come with us. Ino said, I can't. I have a mission I need to do. Naruto said, we just got back. Sakura said, I know, but the old man needed me for another mission. I'll come next time if nothing comes up. Naruto said and vanished, fine. Let's go, Ino. Sakura said and Naruto vanished records vault Naruto was doing his current S rank mission and so far it was going slow. Hiruzen let him into the office to see who was going through the files and he had shadow clones covering every angle of the room with their chakra concealed. He's been in the room for nearly six hours and he felt that the Umbu member left his guarding duty, but he wasn't supposed to leave. He kept his sensing ability at its highest point and then saw somebody enter the room very carefully to not set off any alarms. Who is this? I've never seen him in the village before, but he's wearing a Kanoha headband. Naruto thought, alright. Sasuke and Naruto Uchiha are the folders I'm looking for. The person said and looked through some files, nothing has changed really since the last time I was here. Wait a minute. What's this? It says Sasuke finally awakened his Sharingan on his last mission. Naruto's files has changed, but there's not much in here. There's nothing about his skills or anything. Only his missions record that's clearly false. I mean 0 D rank, 12 C rank, 8 B rank, 1 A rank and 4 S rank missions, but one of those S rank missions is still in progress. This is clearly a folder for a seasoned chunin, but he's only a genin. The person said and never noticed the paralyzing seal on the ground until it was too late, what? The person thought before he was knocked out, but he went up in smoke revealing it to be a shadow clone, one down. One to go. The second person is close, but it's like he's waiting for this guy to leave before he comes in. Naruto thought as he signaled for a shadow clone to leave and a few minutes later, somebody came in with an IWA headband scratched out, Minato Namikaze, where are your records, you son of a bitch? The person asked himself, so he's a rogue IWA ninja looking for something on my father. Naruto thought, as the guy found his folder, but it was sealed shut, another fucking seal. What's this? Naruto Uchiha? A genin with a record like this? There's no way that's possible. Wait a minute. He looks like the Namikaze scum except he wears a mask. Clever, but not clever enough. Looks like I have my target in the Chunin exams. I kill him and I'll get a pair of Sharingan eyes to bring with me to IWA once that Tsuchikage accepts me back into the village. Now, I have to wait for foreign ninja to arrive and take one of their places. The person said and quickly left, thanks a lot, dad. You just had to kill an entire IWA army by yourself. Naruto thought and went to Hiruzen's office Hokage office, I'm back with information on both of the spies, old man. Naruto said, already? I wasn't really expecting you to find anything. Hiruzen said, that's insulting to my stealth skills. Anyway, I've never seen either of them in the village before, but one of them had on a Kanoha headband. Naruto said, I see. What was he after? 
Hiruzen asked, he was specifically looking into Sasuke and my records. He doesn't believe my record and none of my skills were listed on my file. Naruto said, well, your record isn't a lie. As for your skills not being there. You never really showed much of your skills for anybody to put in there. Hiruzen said, oh yeah. Anyway, I was able to get a good read on this guy's chakra, so if he's ever around I can point him out. Naruto said, that's good. What about the other one? Hiruzen asked, he's definitely from IWA, but he's a rogue ninja. He figured out I'm the son of the fourth Hokage and he's going to impersonate somebody in the Chunin exams to come after me. Naruto said, what about Natsumi? Hiruzen asked, he never looked at her file. He figured out my identity and left. Naruto said, if I were to show you the IWA section of the bingo book, would you be able to identify him? Hiruzen asked and pulled out a bingo book, yeah. I got a pretty good look at him. This is him. Naruto said and pointed at the picture of an IWA ninja, Iwaji of the Three Stone Brothers. Two of them were killed off by a squad of our Umbu a few years ago. Seems like his skills haven't changed much over the years. Prefers close-range fighting and he appeared to be skating on the ground, but that's due to his earth chakra nature. Hiruzen said, what rank is he? Naruto asked, he's listed in the B-rank section with a kill on site order and a bounty of 150,000 yen. Hiruzen said, he decided to come to Konoha of all places. What a dumbass. Naruto said and Hiruzen chuckled, yes indeed. What about the other one? Hiruzen asked, he has ash-gray hair and black-rimmed circular glasses. I didn't get a good look at him, but I know his chakra signature. He's not in the village since he used a shadow clone. Naruto said, I. See. I'll look into this with Anko and Ibiki. I won't close this mission yet since we still have one unidentifiable spy. Hiruzen said, I'll see you later, old man. I'm starting my training with Kakashi tomorrow. Naruto said and vanished, you can come out now, Jiraiya and don't think he didn't know you were there. Hiruzen said, that's Naruto? He looks like a mini Kakashi. Jiraiya said, blame Sayuri for that one. She didn't want anyone figuring out he was Minato's son when he couldn't defend himself. Hiruzen said, what about Natsumi? Jiraiya asked, a younger, but more brash version of Kushina. When will you reveal yourself to them? Hiruzen asked, I'm trying to uncover something about Orochimaru, but if everything goes well, then I'll meet them during or after the Chunin exams. Jiraiya said, will you train them? Hiruzen asked, I'll see what I can do. I know the Toads already want Natsumi to sign the contract. I'll have to figure something out for Naruto since everything I'll be training Natsumi has to do with the Toads. Jiraiya said, have you changed your mind about training her with the Nine Tails Chakra? Hiruzen asked, no. From what you've told me, she can already use some of it, so I've decided to change my approach on training her. Jiraiya said, I understand. Have you had any luck locating Sonade? Hiruzen asked, afraid not. She's good at staying off the grid, but I have my spy network looking for her and they'll inform me when she's located. Jiraiya said, let me know when she's found. It would be nice to see my other student after over twenty years. Hiruzen said, why am I looking for her in the first place? Jiraiya asked, it's because Naruto wanted to talk to her about the disease his mother died from. It's been six years since she died and our doctors are stumped. They haven't made any progress in figuring out what was wrong with her. Naruto even took up studying medical ninjutsu ever since she died and although he could use a bit more practice, I'd say he's pretty good at it. Hiruzen said, all the potential he has and he decided to become a medical ninja. Jiraiya said, he's not a medical ninja. He has skills in every aspect of being a ninja. Hiruzen said, what's his specialty? Jiraiya asked, he doesn't have one. It's why I made him an elite genin rather than a special genin. Hiruzen said, what about Natsumi? Jiraiya asked, from what I've seen during their bell test, 
she'll be very good at taijutsu and thanks to her chakra reserves due to the nine tails, she'll be a ninjutsu specialist. However, she wields the kubikurabocho now, so add kenjutsu to that. Hiruzen said, the kubikurabocho? How'd she manage that? Jiraiya asked, apparently Zabuza gave her the sword before he died. From what I saw, she can carry the sword with no problem since she forgot she was carrying it. Hiruzen said, she forgot that she was carrying around a sword that's taller than her? Talk about being Kushina's twin. Jiraiya said. Yes, but I should recommend her to get started on ninjutsu since she doesn't know many. Hiruzen said, you do that. I think I'll go see how they're doing before I head out. Jiraiya said and vanished, I should have warned him about Natsumi's traps in her apartment. Hiruzen said Naruto as Naruto was walking around Kanoha, he felt the same chakra signature from Hiruzen's office following him. He started to cut through alleyways, take the roofs and even used a henge to try and fool this person, but whoever it was, stayed on his trail. After a while, Naruto decided to end this little game and went to a secluded area in the forest. You can come out now. Naruto said and Jiraiya appeared in front of him, so, you're Naruto. Jiraiya said, cut the bullshit. What do you want? Naruto asked, right. I was just checking out the new generation of shinobi and you caught my attention. Jiraiya said, you're a horrible liar. You must be a pedophile since you followed me to a secluded spot in the forest. Naruto said, you led me here. Jiraiya said, no. I was going for an evening walk. You decided to follow me here. Now, tell me what you want or I'll go running into the village screaming that you're after me. I know the men may not harm you due to your books you write for them, but the women in this village hate pedophiles and perverts. Especially perverts like you, Jiraiya of the San Nin. Naruto said, tricked by a thirteen-year-old. This is embarrassing. Jiraiya thought, so, you know who I am. Jiraiya stated, your face is in history books along with your other two teammates. That and you trained my father. Now, what do you want? Naruto asked, okay. You caught me. I just wanted to see how the son of my late student has been. Hiruzen told me about you a bit and I wanted to see for myself. Jiraiya said, you want to fight? Naruto asked, no. Jiraiya said, good. I don't feel like getting my ass kicked right now. Naruto said and Jiraiya sweat dropped, at least you're honest about your skills. However, I was really checking to see how you were. I was going to check on your sister as well, but I couldn't find her. Jiraiya said, she's having a sleepover with Ino and some other genin kunoichi. If you try to peek at my sister I swear I'll cut your nuts off and shove them down your throat before handing you over to Anko. Naruto said and Jiraiya paled, I wouldn't do that. She's only a kid. Jiraiya said, with your reputation, I wouldn't put it past you. Naruto said and then threw a kunai up into a tree, causing a blank masked umbu to fall out before it went up in flames, nice shot. Jiraiya said, I've been dealing with Danzo and his root umbu for six years. I've been fighting them off, honing my skills and protecting Natsumi until she graduated from the ninja academy. Naruto said, this is how you've gotten this good already? Jiraiya asked, yeah. The root umbu helped me gain fighting experience thanks to them constantly attacking me or trying to. Go after Natsumi. Naruto said, does Natsumi know about this? Jiraiya asked, sort of. She knows I've been protecting her from ninja and civilians since the day we met, but she doesn't know that it's an illegally ran Umbu division after her. She needs to train harder before I tell her. Naruto said and Jiraiya nodded, from what I can tell, you've done a good job protecting her. Jiraiya said, she's the only family I have left. I'll protect her even when she doesn't want or need my help. Naruto said, your parents would be proud of you. Jiraiya said, you don't know that. Naruto said, I do know that. The one thing both of your parents cherished more than anything in life was family. 
Jiraiya said, I've started to kill people at the age of seven though. Wouldn't they be kind of disappointed? Naruto asked, no. Your father was ten when he had his first kill and if I'm not mistaken, your mother was eight when she had her first kill. I think they would understand why you had to kill at such a young age. Jiraiya said, I felt like a bad person every time I had to kill somebody. Naruto said, trust me, kid. You're not a bad person. Jiraiya said, how do you know? Naruto asked, Saratobi sensei told me about how your mother died and what you're doing. Studying medical ninjutsu to try and find a cure so somebody else with that disease won't suffer the same fate isn't something a bad person would do. Even going as far as sending a messenger to find Tsunade to help with this disease is also a good thing. Jiraiya said, the messenger was killed before he even left the village. Cat found his body in an alleyway with the message still attached to him. Naruto said, the old man forgot to tell me that, but it's probably why he's been on me even more to find Tsunade and bring her here. Jiraiya said, are you close to finding her? Naruto asked, not really, but give me a couple of months and I should be able to track her down. Jiraiya said, when you find her, I want to come with you. Naruto said, why? Jiraiya asked, because there's a chance that she might MOT return to the village if you find her. I want to go just so I can give her a copy of everything we found out about the disease and its symptoms. That's all I want to do. After that, I'll even go back to the village to leave you alone. Naruto said, I'll talk to the old man about it. Keep watching your sister for me. Jiraiya said and vanished, what does that mean? Naruto asked himself he didn't dwell on it too long since he went home and got prepared for his training with Kakashi tomorrow. All Naruto knew was that he needed to get stronger to protect his loved ones. Before he went to sleep, he summoned Tatsu and gave her a letter to deliver. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like and subscribe, and don't forget to share this video with your friends. Guys, make sure to help the author by visiting the link in the description. This is Fox Sage, and I'm signing off.